Hey guys, it's Gia from Smart Home Makers. In this video, I'm gonna show you five automation tips using geolocation and device tracking in Home Assistant. In this automation, I'm gonna turn on my front door porch light when I enter the zone called Home in Home Assistant. This zone is a default zone that you normally have when you set it up at the beginning, but you can go to configurations and general and change your home longitude and latitude settings. So let's go into our automations.yaml file and let's create a new entry. So my automation is called front porch lights turn on when someone is home. I'm using the platform zone. I'm going to use my entity ID, which is the device tracker that I'm currently using, which is a Life 360 device tracker installed on my mobile phone. So as soon as I enter the zone home, you need to specify in the event enter. And at this stage is like any other automation. So you can trigger an action. In this case, I'm turning the light on. So I'm doing a turn underscore on. The light dot front porch is the entity ID of the light that I'm turning on. And I'm adding also a condition in this case. I only want this to run at nighttime. So I'm looking at the state of sun dot sun and I'm specifying it below horizon. There's no need to pause the video, you'll find all the code in the blog in the description down below. This is a second automation, I want to be notified when my wife is coming back home from school. First thing we need to do is we need to define the zone and we need to define the school zone. So I'm going into my configuration.yaml and I'm decided to create a separate file with all of my zone zones specified. So my file is going to be called zones.yaml. So in the configuration.yaml, include this line of code. Include and then zones.yaml, which will be the name of the file that you've called yourselves. So you need to specify a few things when you're creating a zone. A name, like school, a longitude and latitude value, which you can get from Google Maps if you're not sure where what they are. You'll need a radius, so it's the sort of the radius of the range of where the boundaries are of the zone. And you can also add a nice icon, which will be quite cool on a map. In my example, I'm using the MDI school. If you're sharing your configuration file in Git, for example, I would recommend putting your longitudes and latitudes in the secrets file. At this stage, you need to restart Home Assistant. Now to double check your zones, you can go to configurations, zones, can't modify from the UI any zone that you created in this way. If you want to modify from the UI, I recommend you create it directly from the UI. Now we're ready to go back into the automation files and create this automation. I'm calling my coming back home and I'm using the platform zone. I'm using the same entity ID, but you can use any entity ID for your device tracker, depending on who you actually want to track. I'm using the leave. I'm using leave instead of enter in the event. I'm referencing the zone called zone.school. So this is going to be the precise name that you specify in the zone file. And then I'm calling a text to speech service to actually broadcast the message. And this will broadcast in my kitchen speaker the fact that someone is coming back home. You can also, for example, use a notification if you want to. If you're enjoying this video and you're getting value out of it, hit that subscribe button down below. My goal is to reach 500 subscribers by the end of the month. Let's see if I can make it. In the third automation I'm going to show you today, this one's going to be a notification when I enter a coffee shop and I want to be notified to remind myself to sanitize my hands and to wear face covering. To do this, you'll need notifications enabled. If you don't know how to do it, I'll briefly cover that right now. But if you want more videos, I'll leave them in the description where we've got more detailed explanation. So you'll need to have your Home Assistant app downloaded on your phone and enable notifications. In your configuration.yaml file, you're going to need the default config, the cloud, and if you're using an iOS device, iOS. All of this you'll find it in my blog detail down below. Okay, so alias for this automation, arrived at coffee shop, I'm still using the zone, everything else is pretty much the same. Just to mention, you can also use person if you prefer to use the person. If you do use the person, you need to go to person and set up a device tracker for that person and assign it to a user. So there are a few things there, but it's very straightforward to do. In, in this example, I'm using the notify service and I'm using notify.mobile underscore app and then the entity ID of 
your own mobile phone which you can get from the developers tool and then the message is anything you want to do this is a very basic notification you can do um, much more but this sort of covers the basic and it will ensure that you sort of don't forget these things let's go on the next one in this automation i'm going to use my robovac i love my robovac and i love how robovac can actually clean all that space without actually you lifting a finger but one thing i do hate about robovacs are the noise that they make so i like it when my robovac is able to clean when i'm not at home and that's what we're going to do right now it's very simple to do you need your home zone and that comes by default when you leave your home or when you enter your home, you can have your robot vacuum turning on or going back to base. So there are two um, files and two automations you'll need to create in this example. So in this first example, I'm using the vacuum.start to trigger the robot vacuum to start cleaning as soon as I leave the zone. So I've been testing this in these few days and it actually works quite well. And I get that notification on my app just to let me know that it's actually happening. And when I enter my zone at home, the actual RoboVac goes back to the charging base. And this, you need to be slightly careful with this because if you walk past your home, you might trigger your RoboVac to go back to base, then probably will start again. And it might start the cleaning cycle from scratch if it's not uh, smart enough to know, depending on the model you have, where to actually pick up the cleaning. So you might have that problems, but you need to check the radius of your home and you can make it larger or smaller based on how things work for you. You can also set a form, so you can actually specify, I want to be have left the house for at least five minutes or enter the house for at least five minutes before it stops. But you know, you can play around with that. And again, notification uh, just to my phone, confirming that this is all taking place. Now it's time for you to tell me what are your top five automations in Home Assistant. The last but not least, this automation uses actionable notifications. So basically, when your partner or any family members goes to a store, you always, always think about what, if I knew they were going, I would just go to tell them, you know, why don't you pick up some milk or get that uh, gift card or, or whatever you need to get. I'll show you how you can solve that problem now in Home Assistant. So a couple of things you're gonna to need to do first. You need to go and set a push category into your configuration.yaml and I'll show you how you can do that. So we're in my configurations.yaml now and you need to add this and be careful with the spacing, recommend you copy paste from the blog. So iOS uh, push and category. So you can add multiple of these if you're doing multiple actionable notifications. My example, I'm just gonna use it only once. And what I'm going to do is I need an input box that I can put some text in and then that text will get uh, sent back to my partner and she'll receive a notification herself with actually what I'm writing down there. I'll give you a demo and I'll show you actually how this works. So a few things you need to set up here, an identifier, which I'm called message, title of, of the actual message. So this will be the button that will appear in the notification, the type of activation mode, background, Behavior, this is quite important. You need this precisely text input with a capital I. Uh, and then because you're using text input, you can then use the bottom title and the placeholder. So these are the two, the two values that you see when you click the button. One will be where you type in um, you know, the, the words that you're gonna send, and the other one is the placeholder. So that's like the button to send it actually to them. Once you've got that done, restart Home Assistant. Now let's go back into the automations file. You're gonna need two automations to accomplish this. The first automation is gonna notify you, the person sending the message, that the person, the family member, just entered the zone of the shopping center or whatever whatever place really you define, you can pick any place. So it's uh, you need to create the zone, obviously if you haven't done it done, uh, yet, use the enter event and you're going to use this service called notify which will notify you so it's the same service as before and you've got a message in my example your partner has just got to the store and this is the new bit you need to pay attention to data push and category message which you can see highlighted here on the screen now 
Now message is very important because that message is the exact same text that you put in the configuration that YAML produces. They need to match for this to work. Now reload your automations and test this. If you test this, you should see it coming through. You probably will tap in it. It's not gonna do anything because we need one more automation to actually do the second part. So this is the second part of the automation. Now we need to use the platform event. So this is changed and we need to use the event underscore type to define. And this is specific for iOS, but there's, I'm gonna place a link down in the description for Android, actually how you can accomplish this. I haven't got an Android phone on me, so I can't really test this. Um, the action data is message. So once we've got that, we are gonna have the event data in a variable and we can use a data template to extract that out. So I'll show you what I mean. So here, data underscore template, and you, you're gonna to need to copy this exactly the same way. Message, and then with all the brackets and the quotes and everything, this will pull in the actual text that you put in manually. And that will then go in the message to the other person, so they will receive, oh, okay, I need to pick up the milk, or can you do this, or can you do that? That's really gonna be really useful, and hopefully it'll help you a lot in your day-to-day -day life. If you wanna see three more automations, I'm gonna link a video here, somewhere here, with an Akara multi-sensor, and you can go check that one out. See you in the next video.